Welcome to Survivor Scale! I'm H2 Mass, and today I'm ranking every main character in Train to Busan. Where a father and daughter go on a trip across the country, only to find themselves trapped on a train with highly contagious, quick-footed, flesh-eating zombies and a group of passengers willing to sever every bit of their humanity to stay alive. We start the film with a bit of real-life foreshadowing, as a man complains about quarantine shortly before the COVID pandemic of 2020. Nice. Instead of respiratory symptoms though, this disease causes deer to rise from the dead and stare into the camera like an episode of The Office. We then meet Sok Woo, arguing with his estranged wife about a seemingly detached parenting of their daughter Suan. Determined to prove his wife wrong, Sok Woo buys his daughter a gaming console for her birthday, only to reveal his poor awareness when she shows him that she already has one. Two Wees? I thought this movie was Korean, not French. He then asks her if he can get her anything else, but she only wants to see her mother, so he reluctantly drives her to a train to her mom who lives in Busan. Ooh, new song. As Sakwu and Suwon board the train, the station master shows putrid awareness as he lets a woman with black veins and a bite mark sneak onto the train right before it departs. The woman then starts stumbling through the cabins before collapsing to the floor without a single passenger acknowledging her existence. Finally, however, a train attendant sees the woman, but when she tries to call for help, her radio doesn't work and she reveals that this entire company has awareness problems when the woman rises from behind her and turns into Dracula. Somehow though, the attendant doesn't scream to alert the other passengers, but instead walks through the aisle as an undead woman eats her neck before biting several other passengers who each turn into zombies in mere moments. As chaos spreads, Sok Woo shows some pretty standard deduction when he decides not to fight or reason with these so-called people, but instead grab his daughter and run away as soon as he sees an unusually aggressive man stare at him. Yeah, we don't need to see him bargain with their humanity. We know what a zombie is. Sok Woo then demonstrates a melee when he knocks away a zombie in his path, only to find himself trapped as another zombie feasts on a woman in the cabin in front of him. Fortunately for him, however, fellow man Sang Hua gives us a hint at his inhuman strength when he removes a zombie from the woman and then locks it in the bathroom, giving Sok Woo an opportunity to escape. Good job! Unfortunately though, no! Sok Woo reveals his selfishness and doesn't return the favor, closing the door on Sung Hwa and his pregnant wife Sung Young before they can join him in the next cabin as a horde of zombies chases after them. Sok Woo doesn't lock the door though, so the couple still reaches the living passengers and stays away from the zombies, awkwardly standing next to the man who just left them to die. As the zombies bang on the door, Sok Woo deduces that they don't know how to open it and that the zombies only attacked when they could see them, so Sung Young throws some water on the door and covers it in newspaper, calming the zombies. Nice ingenuity. The remaining passengers then start a pilgrimage to the front of the train, but when they stop for a moment, Suwon selflessly gives her seat to an old woman, only for Sok Woo to once again show his selfishness and tell his daughter that she should only look out for herself. The train's conductor then tells them that they will stop at another city where the military has been set up, but Sok Woo's friend tells him over the phone that they should take a different route than the other passengers to avoid going into quarantine upon arrival. When they reach the station, everybody leaves the train, but one of the passengers, a businessman named Yan Suk, secretly tries to tell the conductor to go to the next station that he's been told is safe and leave the other passengers behind, but the conductor instead shows his selflessness and goes to bring everyone back. Good man. Meanwhile, as the passengers walk through the train station, Sok Woo takes his daughter on a different route to hopefully get special treatment, but a homeless man who heard Sok Woo's phone call earlier decides to follow them. When Sok Woo tries to lie about his intentions, however, his daughter realizes the truth and tries to warn the others, only for Sok Woo to again reveal his selfishness and tell her to forget about them. Disgusted by his lack of empathy, Suwon tells him that this is why his wife left him. Damn. Unfortunately, as the other passengers head down a set of escalators, a horde of zombified soldiers begins chasing them, with the chaos now spilling towards Suan, who shows putrid awareness and simply stands there as a loud-ass mass of cannibals approaches her. Luckily for her though, Sung Hwa knocks out a zombie right before it can reach her, allowing the duo and Sung Young to escape the room. As Sok Woo tries to follow them, a zombie tackles him, but the homeless man incapacitates the zombie by covering it with a jacket, allowing Sok Woo and the homeless man to run to the door, with Sung Hwa knocking closing it like Sok Woo did to him earlier. As Sang Hwa and Sok Woo try to lock the door, the remaining survivors get back onto the train, and Yan Suk implores the attendant to leave without the people still in the station. This man is such an asshole, and much like hemorrhoids, it's only gonna get worse. 
As the train begins to leave, Sok Woo and Song Hwa chase after it, and though Sok Woo jumps on, Song Hwa lags behind, but shows impressive combat that would fit perfectly in 28 days later as he grabs some riot gear and knocks away the zombies in his path before Sok Woo pulls him inside. Elsewhere, Suwon, Sung Young, and the homeless man find themselves trapped between two groups of zombies, so they hide in a bathroom and call Song Hwa for help. For some reason though, despite going against zombies, a type of enemy whose main attack is biting, Song Hwa decides to remove his jacket, making it even easier to get through his skin. Why don't people ever wear leather in zombie movies? Do they just hate any and all things BDSM? Luckily though, while he may have left his biceps exposed, he at least protects his forearms, as the duo, now accompanied by baseball player Min Young Guk, begins their mission to save Suwon and Sung Young, with Sung Hwa starting his attack with a drop kick and neck snap. Nice. As the group moves forward, Song Hwa shows poor caution but strong melee as he takes out zombies with his bare hands, punching their faces and snapping their necks. The train then passes through a tunnel, which darkens the area and for some reason causes the zombies to stop attacking them, so the group sneaks into the next car and locks the door behind them. Now needing to face another horde but not wanting to fight it, Sok Woo demonstrates some ingenuity by taking Song Hwa's phone and leaving it near the door as they sneak inside the car, creating a distraction that lures the zombies back to the other side when he's sets off the ringtone. Of course he uses someone else's phone. Selfish. After making it past the zombies and through the car, the group finally reaches Sung Kyung and Suwon. Min Yang Guk then tells his friend Jin Hee that he and his group will join the other living people at the front of the train. Yan Suk though refuses to believe that they can reach them without getting infected and prepares his plans to stop them. Uh oh. As the train goes through another tunnel, the now expanded group takes advantage of the darkness and passes by another set of zombies by crawling along the shelves on the walls. Unfortunately though, the homeless man shows some clumsiness and falls right at the end, but now wanting to impress his daughter, Sok Woo shows some selflessness and helps him up, only for the train to exit the tunnel and cause the zombies to start searching for them. As they hide behind the seats, they make a plan to run for the door, but the homeless man again displays his clumsiness and steps on a can, alerting the zombies and forcing everyone to run. When Song Hwa tries to close the door behind them, the zombies block the opening and the passengers with Yan Suk lock the door to keep the group from joining them. I know you're trying to be cautious, but that's a glass door. If you don't let them in, they might break it and take away the safety for everyone. Speaking of which, Min Young Guk starts beating on the door to get inside, as Sang Hwa continues to hold the other door closed. Sadly though, a zombie elevates and bites his hand, infecting him. Damn. Shoulda worn some leather. Min Young Guk then breaks through the next door and the group begins pushing against the other passengers to get inside the next car as Sok Wu and Song Hwa continue to fend off the zombies. The door though begins to crack, so Song Hwa tells Sok Wu to look after his wife since he knows he doesn't have much time left. The door then shatters and Sok Wu takes Sung Young to the other door as Song Hwa showcases his strength and holds back the entire horde by himself. That's very impressive, but I thought these zombies were supposed to infect you very quickly. He got bitten a while ago. No longer able to resist the infection, Song Hwa finally loses control and turns into a zombie as the horde overwhelms him, his courage and selflessness creating allies while his nearly unrivaled melee gives him a high floor in any horror movie. Leaving the fantastic fighter on the freeway to fatherhood in a The group then finally pushes through the other passengers, but an old woman just stands at the entrance instead of running inside and ends up as yet another victim of the horde. People really gotta learn to move. Sok Woo then takes my advice and moves his fist into Yan Suk's face for locking them outside. Yan Suk then proclaims that Sok Woo is infected and that the passengers need to throw all the newcomers out. The crowd then joins in on Yan Suk's selfishness and clamors for them all to leave, so the group walks into a car further along the train and fortunately further away from the zombies. The other passengers then lock them in the car, effectively trapping themselves on both sides by what they expect to be zombies. If you think they're gonna turn into zombies, why would you put them into the only car connected to yours that doesn't have zombies? If they do turn into zombies, you'll be trapped on both sides. Seems like a terrible idea. Speaking of which, as the passengers continue trapping the group inside, the old woman's friend decides to become a full course meal and opens the door, causing almost all the passengers in the room to die. Told you.
A bit later, the train encounters a roadblock, so the conductor tells everyone to board another train on the other side of the station. Meanwhile, Yan Suk and one of the attendants had somehow managed to hide in the bathroom as the other passengers were attacked, but now find themselves surrounded by zombies. Yan Suk though tells the attendant that the coast is clear, and his dumbass doesn't question the man who's been selfish this entire time and instead simply opens the door, only to fall victim to Yan Suk's treachery as he gets pushed into the zombies as a distraction for Yan Suk's escape. Why would you even talk to a man like that? As the group moves across the tracks, a runaway train crashes nearby and separates them from one another. Min Yang Kuk and Jin Hee then go into a train but can't open the exit and show poor awareness as they forget to close the back door with violent cannibals still on the loose. Yan Suk then rushes inside and throws Jin Hee at the zombie chasing him, causing her to get infected. Min Yang Kuk then holds her as she turns into a zombie and bites him too, his solid combat saving him from bottom tier, only for his poor self-preservation to knock him down again leaving the affable athlete who activated an appetite in beat. As Yan Suk runs towards the train the conductor told them about, he shows his clumsiness and falls, but the conductor shows Yan Suk some undeserved selflessness as he gets off the train to help him, only for Yan Suk to again reveal his dastardliness as he throws him into a zombie and then runs onto the still moving train the conductor left. This man is diabolical. Meanwhile, Sok Woo, Suan, Sung Young, and the homeless man all find themselves trapped under a train car filled with zombies. After a group of them breaks through the window, the homeless man shows some bravery and holds them off as the others crawl under a small opening just before the train falls and kills everyone still beneath it, leaving the clumsy character with a courageous conclusion in seat. Sok Woo, Suwon, and Sung Young then begin running to the train as a massive swarm of zombies chases after them. Luckily, they make it on, but have to kick off some zombies who have linked themselves together like ants on a lake. Unfortunately though, when they move towards the front, Yan Suk jumps out and has somehow increased his nastiness by turning into a zombie. Yan Suk then attacks Sok Woo, who shows some dumbassery and covers Yan Suk's mouth with his hand, leading to his own infection. Well. As he begins turning, Sok Woo shows some ingenuity and ties a chain around his waist before jumping off with Yan Suk, keeping himself on the train as he disposes of the zombie, whose dastardliness knows no bounds, but with self-preservation strong enough to survive even over more capable characters. His leadership also allowed him to manipulate other people's fears and enhance the effectiveness of his own decisions, giving himself a valuable role in the mist and unfortunately finding the baneful businessman with a belly for brains in beat. With his time nearly over, Sok Woo tells Sung Young to pull the brakes when they arrive at Busan. He then gives his daughter his last goodbye as she begs him not to leave, just for him to run away and fall off the train as he fully turns into a zombie, his solid but not outstanding qualities doing just enough to make me confident he can perform similarly in other horror movies as well, leaving the undead dad with a delicate daughter in eight. Now approaching the tunnel, Sung Young pulls the brakes and the last two survivors walk along the tracks until they meet a group of soldiers who luckily don't shoot them. Let's hope it doesn't go like 28 days later. But that's it. The average rank for this cast was B tier. And okay, collection of characters. As one of the century's most popular horror movies, Train to Busan really lives up to its reputation, offering great scares, compelling characters, and emotional moments that I'll never forget. Thanks for watching.